This is COGS, where we learn about cognitive science. Hello, my name is Nora. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Cognitive Science. I want to start with a disclaimer that you should feel free to challenge anything that I say, since really most of what I'm going to be talking about is stuff that I've just picked up in classrooms. I am not really going to reference textbooks very often. I'll try to cite everything that I can in the credits. I certainly don't have a plan for how this is going to go, but there's a lot to talk about and I'm really excited to get started. So I figured the best way to start um, is by giving a very brief history of cognitive science and how it started because it's a very recent field. Once upon a time, there was and still is a guy named Noam Chomsky. He's still alive. This was right around when computers were becoming really exciting in the academic community. I guess he was like, hey, computers are cool. What if the human brain is like a fleshy computer? Because computers can perform functions and people do functions too, right? So let's make a, you know, a science based on that idea. And so cognitive science was born, or at least cognitive linguistics. Uh, there are lots of different branches of cogsci. So like cognitive linguistics has to do with breaking down language and how that works. Uh, embodied cognition is really concerned with how cognition is integrated with our bodies. Cognitive neuroscience is mostly talking about how cognition sort of maps onto the brain and how the structure of the brain influences our cognition. There are people who had theories before this that have been kind of scooped up into cognitive science. <laughs> There's a guy named Piaget, who was really cool, uh, came up with a lot of theories about bodies and how they learn about the world. So the main principle of cognitive science is that human cognition, well, and any cognition, animals are included too, can be broken down into operations and processes, processes. One of the biggest issues with cognitive science is that all scientists talk as if they're right because I don't know, that's how papers are written and it's really just a load of, a load of <laughs> their confounding factors, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really important to double check, make sure that other people have studied the same thing, have been able to reproduce these results. There was this huge thing about um, this area of the brain called RTPJ, the right temporal parietal junction. It's like, uh, Parietal lobe is like up here, temporal lobe is right by your ear, so it's like kind of here on the right. This one group was like, hey, we found that RTPJ is used in theory of mind. And then these other people were like, hey, we found that RTPJ is used in, RTPJ is used in attention allocation or something. And, but it's the same area. Oh, that means that it's like, they must have the similar cognitive function or something. Then they took a closer look and were like, mm, they're like really close together, but like they're kind of not the same. They're like here and here. So it's just really important to make sure that you are double checking everything when you're talking about Kagsai. Definitely feel free to question me. I've studied it for four years. I don't really know anything. <laughs> Ideally, I would love if people would submit topics that they are interested in and then I can talk about them. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of pull stuff out of the air. There's a whole lot of like basics that I am not sure I will remember to cover. So if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, then let me know. I will try to provide a glossary of terms. So yeah. Cognitive science. Thanks for watching. Hope you watch more and you know, like, subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. Me, 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 me.